Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about habitable planets, but the type of which we've never discussed before. The smallest habitable planets that are possible in theory. Let's discuss how small can a planet be and still maintain water and welcome to Wadamay. So one of the biggest things um, in astronomy today is trying to discover habitable planets and specifically Earth-like planets able to sustain a very permanent and very um, hospitable conditions on the surface, specifically liquid ocean for something like a billion years or so. One of the uh, major definitions of the habitable zone where Earth is located is that it's the area of the solar system that you can see in green right here that um, has enough temperature and sort of enough solar illumination for a planet of a certain size to have liquid water on the surface and uh, have it for at least a billion years, which is usually what we think is necessary for life to evolve. Now, um, Earth, as you can see, is in that area. However, Venus is a little bit too close and Mars might be a little bit too far. Although that's not really the case yet because we're constantly redefining this area. But when talking about the habitable zone, we usually talk about it in terms of the actual area around the star system, but we rarely talk about the size of the actual planets. And so here, if we were to look at various types of planets in our own solar system, and even possibly compare them to some of the moons, would we actually find objects at which point um, water just simply cannot be created? In other words, how small can a planet or an object be before it's incapable of supporting liquid ocean even if it's in a habitable zone? In other words, think of it this way. If at some point in the future our sun starts to increase its luminosity, which it actually will, and becomes so hot that the water on the surface of Earth evaporates, but at the same time, the water on the farther objects, like for example, Ganymede and Europa and Titan. And let's just jump to Ganymede here. This is the biggest moon in our solar system. So these objects might start receiving enough sunlight to potentially become habitable. But can they? Will Ganymede one day be a habitable object? Will Titan be a habitable object? Will they actually have liquid oceans and possibly atmosphere? So, is this where humanity might live one day, if it's still around? Well, let's answer this using the new paper that came out only a few days ago that talks about the smallest possible habitable objects. And specifically, they literally investigate how small can an object be to have liquid ocean and still be habitable in the habitable zone. To help you get to the answer very quickly, here is the image made by the scientists from Harvard. And as you can see here, the smallest habitable world um, has to be approximately 0 0.0268 Earth masses. It's approximately five times more massive than Mars is, but unfortunately, neither Ganymede nor the moon of our own planet are massive enough to sustain liquid water. In other words, bad news for pretty much all of the major moons in our solar system. Neither Europa, nor Ganymede, nor my favorite moon Titan will become these very beautiful water worlds that I wish they would. So this paper is actually very specific in defining this. They go through a very thorough atmospheric analysis um, and include very thorough analysis of the water properties themselves to try to understand when will water start escaping into the atmosphere and basically run away from the planet. And it just so happens that this value is about uh, 2.6 or 2.7% of the mass of Earth. So in other words, here is an example of a planet that's very similar to mass um, of Earth right now. And here is that limit right now. It's basically this object. If this object is about 2.7% um, of the mass of Earth, it is really at that limit where it can still maintain the ocean, but at the same time, um, it just doesn't have enough gravity anymore to have a permanent ocean for a long time. Anything below that and the ocean just completely evaporates almost right away and leaves nothing behind. In other words, this right here is the absolute minimum for the smallest habitable planet 
imaginable or scientifically possible. And that's really just based on the mass itself, not so much on the size. As long as the mass is there, the planet will be able to maintain water and will probably stay habitable long enough to um, help life evolve. But anything smaller and the water just disappears. Now even though for Mars it's technically about four times that limit, it doesn't have any water. And here the reasons are obviously different. We believe today that Mars lost its water when um, basically the magnetosphere disappeared or it may have never had magnetosphere and so the water just kind of escaped eventually. And so um, for a small planet like this to maintain this liquid water, it also probably needs some kind of a strong magnetic field. So just the mass and size itself is not a guarantee for um, a planet to have water. And so for a tiny planet like this to protect itself from the solar radiation and to protect its ocean, it still needs to have magnetic field. But that's really not the point of the study. The point is to just find the smallest mass. Now this paper also discovers something else very very interesting and here they're talking about the uh, limit of the habitable zone in terms of the area. While doing this research, the scientists behind this paper realized that even though today we believe that if you're really too close to the sun like the Venus here, you'll eventually have the so-called runaway greenhouse gas effect where basically because of the temperature eventually everything from inside the planet escapes into the atmosphere and creates these extremely hot inhospitable conditions like on Venus. The scientists behind this paper also realized that if this planet is actually less massive, if it's much much smaller, in other words, if it's somewhat similar to the tiny object I showed you before, it will actually have a very unusual way of protecting the potential atmosphere and water on the surface. So here, the way that scientists analyze the situation is by realizing that with the small planets, because of less gravity here, as they decrease in size, the actual atmospheric layer that you can kind of see right there starts expanding dramatically and thus lowers the pressure on the surface while at the same time help the planet to maintain stability on the surface and um, essentially allow it to maintain a stable, relatively warm temperature. The smaller the planet is and the closer it is to the star, the more likely is this planet to have relatively stable habitable conditions on the surface, especially when it's really small. So in other words, this kind of expands this inner um, habitable zone by quite a large margin, allowing these small habitable worlds to exist a lot closer to the parent star. But most importantly, it actually protects these planets from the runaway greenhouse gas effect that turned Venus into this uninhabitable world and might one day do the same to Earth. In other words, if we discover a small world in the location where Venus is somewhere else around another star system, it's quite possible that this world might be habitable. It might have liquid water on the surface and very stable permanent atmosphere, possibly even capable of supporting life on that planet. So this is something that we need to study a little bit more because this study does create these new potential possibilities for having liquid water on much smaller planets. But unfortunately, all of this of course stops as soon as the planet drops below that required limit of about 2.7% of the mass of Earth. Anything smaller than that and the planet will just not be able to have any water no matter where it is. And so this paper is actually very very interesting in discovering this and will allow us to redefine what exactly we're looking for when trying to find another Earth-like planet. But of course the main problem right now is really trying to discover these objects. This planet is so small and so insignificant that discovering and finding this object somewhere out there in nearby star systems would be very hard. As of today we haven't actually found any objects that are so little in mass and in size. As a matter of fact the smallest planet we've discovered was around a pulsar and that planet is more massive than this object. So we first of all need to have better telescopes able to discover something this small. But nevertheless, this paper is very crucial in our search for these Earth-like planets and hopefully one day we'll find one. But of course, uh, the, I guess, more interesting discovery from this paper is that none of the moons we wish to settle one day, such as Ganymede, Europa or Titan or really any other moons in our solar system will ever really become Earth-like objects. They will never really have liquid oceans. 
And although many of us wish one day to see an ocean on Ganymede or uh, possibly swim in the lakes of Titan, it's very likely it will probably never happen. Unfortunately, they're just too small to maintain this and will remain ice worlds and then just kind of lose all of their water and turn into tiny rocks. But that's really a story for another day and we'll talk about this in one of the future videos. For now, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out the paper and the study in the description below. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and come back tomorrow to learn something else. And maybe even support this channel Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.